All right, so I just want to make a quick video about uh, Monaco Vegas uh, speed versus prestige. I don't even know what to refer to Vegas as other than speed. Although the track does look very, very fast. Um, it's probably going to take the fastest uh, street circuit uh, title from from Jeddah. Will be interesting to see if that happens. I mean, if uh, if I'm going by the what the sim races are showing, then for sure it has to be the fastest street circuit. Which raises some question marks, but I digress. We'll get to those another day. Right now, I just want to talk about Monaco Vegas uh, speed versus prestige, or what should I what should I call it? Not speed glam, glam versus prestige. All right, the glamour of Vegas versus the prestige of Monaco. Monaco also is glam, but it's more prestige than glam. So, the brother left a comment on my Vegas GP the billion dollar weekend video and it's not that I, I disagree with the comment in any great way it's actually a great comment like he's really left a fantastic comment but there's this there's this thought among um, F1 fans I don't know if it's just newer fans or maybe there's some legacy fans that also think this or something but there's this thought among F1 fans that you know, Monaco is replaceable in some fashion. Monaco is irreplaceable. Monaco is irreplaceable. There is nothing in the world, not not Vegas. Uh, they could have a New York City race, not New York City. Miami, they're racing Miami. They wanted a street circuit in Miami. They're not getting it. But even if it was a street circuit, that wouldn't be. It wouldn't be Monaco. You see. So there's this. <clears throat> There's this air about Monaco that you just can't get anywhere else. You just can't get it. Call it prestige, call it money, call it uh, the celebrities just coming in to, to see oh what's happening in the Monaco Grand Prix. You know that that's always that always happens at Monaco. Yeah, it's not happening at other circuits, but Monaco was the first place that you know people. Monaco is generally the first place that, as a new fan, you see like, oh my god, celebrities show up to this event, like, what's going on here? So, in that regard, there is no replacing Monaco. Just from an event standard, there is no replacing Monaco. There is nothing like Monaco. You might have things that have ambitions to be like Monaco, but they're, they're 50 years short on history. 50 years, jeez. They're 70 years short on the history. Right? Never mind the prestige and all that. They're 70 years short on the history. Circuit history. And, you know, there's this argument of um, Monaco isn't a good or racing circuit or what have you. Monaco tests the drivers in a unique way, different to other circuits. And no, it's not just a qualifying circuit. Like, that's, that's a huge misconception. And people love to cling to that, even though... You know, if you've watched enough Monaco Grand Prix, you know that's decidedly not what the Grand Prix is. And for an example of this, uh, I would suggest watching the, hmm, not the 05 Grand Prix, the 2006 Grand Prix. Now, yes, yes, um, Weber and Raikkonen did retire there, and the victory was a formality for Alonso in the end. I believe it was Alonso that won, might have been Trulli, but I'm pretty sure it was Fernando that won that. And... <clears throat> This race, that 2006 Monaco Grand Prix, I, I really do like suggest going to watch it. Of course, it's going to be a difficult Grand Prix to find. All the really good Grand Prix are like difficult finds, right? But if you do manage to find it, and there's ways to find it, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm not going to drop any any sources on this video, lest, you know, the, the pony, the popo, just want to, you know, shut it off and secure all this, all this coin for FOM. But yeah, if you go and watch that 2006 Monaco Grand Prix, maybe you can get it on F1 TV or something, I don't know. I resent this F1 TV thing anyway. But if you go watch this Monaco Grand Prix from 06, wow. I'm telling you, wow. You will understand the type of pressure cooker events that Monaco is. You will really understand it. Because Monaco is a pressure cooker for the drivers and probably the teams, you know. But for the drivers, you're out there on the circuit and if you have a rival who's just as good as you then you are on the limit lap after lap literally just 
not not only trying to keep your car out the barriers right but trying to push the car through the circuit as fast as it can possibly go and that requires so much precision so much track knowledge so much it just requires so many aspects from a driver's skill set in order to actually do that consistently that until you actually see it being done you aren't going to actually understand what this monaco grand prix is actually supposed to represent on the calendar you know because i mean if you've watched like recent monaco grand prix or something and with the cars getting wider and all of this then you'd be like oh my god this is such a lame grand prix where's the over you know this that's another thing like the new fans are very concerned with overtaking. You don't need overtaking in a Grand Prix. You need a Grand Prix that, 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 that has stakes. Right? You need a Grand Prix that has stakes, that has jeopardy. Right? Where things or oh, something could go wrong and someone could lose out on a really good position. That's what you need. You don't need overtaking. And that Monaco 06 Grand Prix. Woo! Woo! Let me tell you. This Grand Prix. This Grand Prix will absolutely set it straight for you. If you have any doubts as to what exactly this Monaco Grand Prix is about, go watch this Grand Prix. Monaco 2006. Um, Weber should be in Williams for that Grand Prix, right? I think it's Williams, Cosworth, a V8 area. No, it's not V8 area just yet. No, it is V8 area. I'm, I'm fibbing. It is V8 area. But you go watch this. Go watch this Grand Prix and I swear to you, I swear to you, you will grasp immediately, immediately what type of challenge the Monaco Grand Prix is for drivers and how valuable the challenge that is to have on the calendar because there's no other circuit that presents that type of challenge. I mean, the closest thing to that type of circuit challenge is, I don't know, perhaps Canada, Montreal, but that's a reach. I'm really making a reach there. Singapore is not the same type of challenge as Monaco at all. Yeah, there's a precision aspect that's required. Yes, it can be a pressure cooker, but really Singapore, Singapore is more for a fitness test for the drivers. Of course, it's a lot more than that. Of course, it is a lot, a lot, a lot more than that, but really it is a fitness test for the drivers. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an endurance test for the cars. Because, you know, I don't know if people know this, but the Singapore Grand Prix is the, <laughs> is, is the thirstiest Grand Prix on the calendar. Right? That's the, that's the Grand Prix with the highest fuel consumption, believe it or not. Maybe that's changed now with this E10 era or something. Who knows? But before, before um, this ground effects era, Singapore was recognized as the thirstiest circuit on the calendar. Now Monaco, Monaco, what is Monaco on the calendar? Monaco is the most demanding circuit on the calendar, easily. Easily, it's not even close, there's nothing else like it. And of course it doesn't help that you've got all these modern circuits coming up with, um, coming out with their, uh, you know, kilometer long runoff areas and all of that, it doesn't help. It doesn't help because these people go and watch the racing on these circuits and you know they start thinking that yeah you can you can do this racing everywhere no you can't really monaco requires too much precision for that you get it wrong on monaco you're in the, you're in the wall and that that's another thing about monaco because it's so it's so difficult to overtake in general right even in the pits or whatever because it's so difficult to overtake in general when an overtake does happen it's valuable it's a valuable overtake even if it's DRS assisted, it's a really valuable overtake. It's not, you know, that's where you're seeing whether your favorite driver can overtake for real or not. Right? All these other circuits, you've got DRS all over the pot, all over the pot. You've got these super wide runoff areas. So, you know, if you get your braking wrong, it's fine. It's really fine. You know, you just go again, you'll, 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 you'll get it next lap. That doesn't happen in Monaco. Matter of fact, you can get to braking wrong and survive, but I mean, you literally have to put the car in reverse to get out of whatever situation you put yourself in, most likely. And this puts such a demand on the drivers for precision that is just non-existent anywhere else on the calendar. 
So yeah, these th that's my thoughts as to why, you know, Monaco. And of course, it's it's been announced lately that there's a new Monaco contract in the works. Of course, there is a new Monaco contract in the works, right? F1 cannot drop this Grand Prix. F1 quite literally cannot drop this Grand Prix. This Grand Prix, they do not have that option. They do not. If they lose the Monaco Grand Prix, then you know, are, are, you, are you still are you still running Formula One? You can't be. Because it's, where's Monaco? You see, Monaco is such an intrinsic part of Formula One by now that if I mean, remember 2020, there was no Monaco Grand Prix. Now, for me personally, I won't speak for other people on this, but for me personally, 2020, oh, something felt off with that season because there was no Monaco Grand Prix, it just felt off. Now, 2021 felt off for different reasons, right? But there was a Monaco Grand Prix. So you know, move going into Monaco and post Monaco before you know the real, the real kerfuffle of the season started kicking off. You know, it was like, wow, we're having a real Formula One season. At least for me, well, we're having a real Formula One season. Oh, we stopped by Monaco. Well, this isn't 2020, that's for sure. 2020, there was no Monaco Grand Prix, and <clears throat> yeah, it was a difficult season, but it was. <clears throat> It was less jarring to race twice at the same circuit. You know, the Red Bull Ring, A1 Ring in Austria. It was less jarring to race twice at a single circuit than for there to be no Monaco Grand Prix. And 2020 was a real eye-opener for especially the, the old heads of Formula 1, especially the legacy, especially all these legacy guys that are on, uh, that are in power, uh, positions of power in the FIA and FOM and all of this. These guys, when they experienced the season without the Monaco Grand Prix, I'm pretty sure they decided to themselves and turned like, wow, we absolutely cannot use this Grand Prix. Because yeah, we're putting on a Formula One season, but it's not a real Formula One season. It's not Monaco Grand Prix. You know, have the drivers really been tested? Have you really tested the drivers over the season on account of there's no Monaco Grand Prix yet? And of course, if you're a Verstappen fan, you might say, oh yeah, totally, I agree with that. But, you know, you, you have to be appreciative of Monaco. Verstappen was not good at Monaco for a long period of his young career so far. Right? Now, he sold his issues at Monaco, but it's noteworthy that he had no, he, he had quite literally no chance of actually securing a title until he had rectified his Monaco demons, you see? Because Verstappen coming in through Taurus and, and all of and moving to Red Bull and all that, he crashed. He would always crash out at Monaco. Now when you look at that, the one year that he won at Monaco, he's quote one, unquote, championship and it's funny you'd find a lot of the Verstappen fans saying oh get Monaco off the calendar like guys you don't understand what the circuit is testing you don't understand how the drivers are being tested on the circuit you know when your driver finally figures out Monaco oh rejoice you guys added a huge you know a, a huge, he's, he's added a huge wrinkle to his game by figuring out Monaco. Every driver, every driver, stands true for every driver. Hamilton, he could not win the championship until he rectified Monaco. Now, of course, I might I might debate that in, in some other settings, right? I might definitely debate that. But, you know, for the narratives of Formula One, for, for what, for, for, for the metaphysical setup that, that F1 has, yeah, you have to get Monaco right, or else you're probably not getting a championship. And this detail just seems to be missed on a lot of on a lot of F1 fans. Now, I'm not sure if these are new fans, old fans, what have you. I doubt it's old fans because I expect old fans to to have a respect for Monaco, have a reverence for Monaco, like revere the circuit. There is no circuit like it. 
there is no circuit that will test you like that. You see, here's the thing with Monaco, and Jeremy Clarkson said this in, in, in that Top Gear episode where they were driving their hot hatchbacks around, around Monte Carlo. Right? He said it perfectly. You could uplift that Monaco circuit, take it anywhere in the world, put it down. As long as you've got the barriers all around it and all of that's the same setup. Wow, you've got a you've got a wonderful circuit. You've got a real test of a circuit. Vegas by comparison, I've looked at the sim racing. I've looked at the sim racing videos. It's a fast circuit, looks looks fun. Looks uh, interesting from an overtaking point of view. But is that circuit actually going to challenge drivers? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I do not see that happening. Am I belittling the circuit or anything while saying that? No, I don't. I don't think so. It's just, it's just the facts of the matter. There are some circuits that challenge drivers in this way. There's other circuits that challenge drivers in a different way. The challenge at Vegas is going to be that uh, it's not actually going to be difficult to overtake. And there's a fuck huge long straight that you have to power down. So, you know, they will be overtaking. You will come under attack if you're the lead driver and all of that. That's going to be the challenge at Vegas. It's not going to be a precision challenge. It's not going to be an accuracy challenge. You know, you probably won't even need circuit knowledge because I don't... Well, as the circuit develops over the years, that will probably come into play, but... You know, from, from its debut, from its debut year, and five years after, I don't see circuit knowledge playing any role there. Unless, you know, some circuit modifications come in after a few years or something. But otherwise, it looks like a, it looks like a, a car circuit. You know, you have to have a good car in order to, to um, reach a peak result at that circuit. And I don't think drivers will have much input on that circuit. Matter of fact, when we go there, I actually expect, like, you know, I expect drivers like Sainz and, and Perez to be, to be faster than their teammates. Just on account of it doesn't look like a circuit where, you know, if you're a Max Verstappen, if you're a Charles Leclerc, if you're a Lewis Hamilton, well, I guess Hamilton is paired up with Russell, so they're kind of the same thing right now, right? There. So I guess we can exclude the Mercedes boys. But there's, there's drivers who are, how do I say this, man? There's drivers who have flair behind the wheel, and then there's drivers who, who just play it, uh, play it by the book. And Perez and Sainz, these guys, they kind of play it by the book. Sainz does have some flair to him. But Leclerc and Verstappen, they have the real flair, you see? And of course, the Mercedes boys, they're, they're full of driving flair. Forget about it. You know, forget about it. So I just want folks to appreciate what exactly Monaco is. There is no circuit like it. There really is no circuit like it. And Formula One is so lucky to have it. So lucky. You see, Formula One is so lucky to have Monaco that even the fans take it for granted what exactly Monaco is presenting to the calendar. And of course, some people thought, of course, it was a brief thought, but some people thought for a second that Vegas was here to replace Monaco. Monaco is irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. Forget about it being like the crown, I mean, the jewel in the crown. You know, it's not the jewel in the crown. It is the crown. All the other circuits are the jewels. You see? Vegas, that's just one, one diamond on the crown. Monaco is the crown itself. This is why there's such prestige around winning this Grand Prix. Why, why, why do the drivers care about winning this Grand Prix where it's, it's quote-unquote impossible to overtake? Because for you to win that Grand Prix, all right, for you to win that Grand Prix, not only have you beaten 
all the 19 other drivers on the grid. Not only have you done that, you have also beaten the circuit itself. There's nowhere else you get to do that. Nowhere else. I mean, maybe Singapore. But Singapore isn't becoming Monaco. No one's talking about Singapore as a new Monaco, right? Jeddah, no, no chance. Baku, no chance. Vegas, I mean, Vegas is interesting. I mean, Vegas, I've seen some, some other comments on, on this webosphere, right? And, and I quite like those comments because they say, like, Vegas is going to be, uh, you know, like Monaco's wild cousin or something. I, I like that. That makes sense to me. But to replace Monaco? Oh, that'll never happen. Never, ever. That circuit, Monte Carlo, priceless. If you, if you put a price on all the circuits, and of course there's a price on all these circuits, but if you put a price on all these circuits that are on the calendar, Monaco is priceless. Has no value. You, you cannot put a value on that. You can put a value on Vegas, billion dollar weekend. I did that. You can put a price on Monza. You can put a price on Silverstone. Even though those two circuits have incredible prestige about them in history. Right? You can put a price on that. There is no price you can put on Monaco. People are going to say, oh, the contract is valued at, you know, this much. The contract is a formality. The contract is a formality, mate. Monaco, you get, your trophy gets handed to you by royalty. There's nothing else like this on the calendar. Nothing else like it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't think, I don't think anything will replace Monaco. I mean, we'll probably get a few more street circuit editions over the years. None of them will replace Monaco. So just keep this in mind next time you hear someone talking about some circuit that's going to replace Monaco. And this ain't a flame to the brother that made the comment because I, I really like that comment. I really liked that comment. That was a good comment. But it did get me thinking like, would they ever replace Monaco? Because this, this circuit is just not like anything else on the calendar. It's just not. It's just not. It is its own quite unique beast. And it's a storied beast too. It's got all this lore about it, all this history, all this prestige. I mean... The there, there's one other reason that the Monaco Grand Prix would never be would never be replaced, right? And this is probably like a weird fruity ass reason, but one reason it will never be replaced is because there's a waiting list. You know, to get your yacht into the harbor at Monaco, there's a waiting list of 10 years for that. You buy your ticket now, and you only get to take your yacht there in 10 years time. You might not even be. You might not even be able to afford the yacht at that time. You see? But these guys, they put themselves on the waiting list and, you know, they make it there 10 years later. Scratch that one off the bucket list. So you've got, like, guaranteed high-earning tickets sold for in the next decade. They're already sold. That's free money, as far as F1 is free money. That is free money, as far as F1 are concerned. Now, yes, F1 doesn't get the ticket, the ticket uh, fucking revenue, right? Of course, F1 don't get the ticket revenue. Maybe in some circuits, it would be that arrangement. But Monaco has guaranteed income from these harbor spaces. Guaranteed. So when F1 come to the negotiating table and they say you know how, how many how many harbor slots have you sold for the next uh, for the next decade and they say it's sold out oh there's the value of the race right there and that's it i'm in peace hell breezy let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing that thing over there. Hey. 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 Hey.